Hello and welcome back to Chemistry. It is all that matters. And as with life, there are exceptions to every rule. And today we're going to look at some examples of exceptions to the rule of octet. Now we wish that every rule always held true and we would have eight electrons around every element or at least in the case of hydrogen and helium where you would have two that these rules would always hold true. But we do have some molecules out there that break the rules, or they don't actually break the rules. They are exceptions to the rules because the rules have not been fully expounded. So we are going to look at a couple of these exceptions beginning with NO2 nitrogen dioxide. Now in order for nitrogen dioxide to work, we actually have to use a different set of rules for the middle atom. And what we're going to do is we're going to satisfy the rule of octet for both of the oxygens, but the nitrogen is going to be one short. And so what we end up with here is oxygen double bonding to the nitrogen on one side, and the other oxygen single bonding to nitrogen on the other side, and that leaves that one extra electron on the nitrogen, which means it is not going to follow the rule of octet. And this is a stable molecule, and it is created when lightning strikes in our atmosphere, and nitrogen is bound to the oxygen O2 molecule. So here is an exception that we will have to deal with as we build certain Lewis dot molecules, nitrogen dioxide. Another example usually occurs whenever a halogen is bonded to a boron. Uh, boron, of course, with a S2P1 electron arrangement. Um, in the case of this molecule, BF3, boron trifluoride, we will end up with the boron bonding single bonds to each of the fluorines and the three individual electrons on the boron will take up space on each of those fluorines, giving each of the fluorines the rule of octet, but the boron will only have six electrons. Now phosphorus, which has five valence electrons, it can bind with the chlorine-fluorine halogen group, in groups of five and we have this strange case scenario where each of the singular electrons from phosphorus will separate and take up space on one of each of the halogens giving five spaces for bonding for the halogens and we end up with phosphorus with single bonds to five different chlorines this can also happen with bromine, fluorine, or any of the halogens. And um, this could also happen with nitrogen uh, and phosphorus and any of the uh, cases where you have S2P3 as the electron orbital arrangement. One other example just to make you aware of where certain molecules will form where the rule of octet will not be followed. And in the case of sulfur, um, you can get 12 electrons around that sulfur when each of those six valence electrons in the S2P4 orbital arrangement bonds as a single bond to a series of halogens. In this case, we have SF6 sulfur hexafluoride where we have single bonds to the fluorine atoms from that sulfur as the central atom and we have a hexagonal arrangement of those fluorines around that sulfur atom. So as with anything uh, most rules can be broken or there are exceptions to every rule and in the case of chemistry those rules are usually not fully expounded and therefore we need to understand that there will be cases in nature where the rule of octet 
and even the rule of, of duet may not be followed in those molecular bonds. So keep working on your chemistry.